it's Rachel and in this video I'll be showing you how you can make icing or frosting for your polymer clay creations using 12 different methods. All of these designs are perfect to use on miniature cakes, cupcakes, cookies, frappes, desserts or just any charm you want really. For the purpose of demonstration I'm using all polymer clay cupcakes and white coloured icing in this tutorial but of course you are not limited to just these. For this very first design, take a ball of the clay that you're wanting to use and then split it in half. Then roll each of these pieces into a long coil and once you have them roughly even in thickness, join them together and then just twist them to get the swirly cream look. To add it to your creation, trim off one of the ends. I usually cut it on an angle so that it's easier to attach. Then you can connect that end to your charm and you can blend it down to secure it using one of your tools if needed. Then all you have to do is just keep wrapping it around until you reach the top, trim off the excess and then pinch the very pointed end to fix it up. here is very similar to the first except this one consists of three coils instead of two. Both of these designs create a slightly different look depending on what you're going for. I find that this one with the three coils ends up looking a little bit more compact and neater because there is less space between the coils. I find that it also adds that tiny little extra bit of detail due to that additional piece of clay. frosting we're going to be using a triangular base so take some of your clay and roll it into a long coil as normal. You'll then want to go ahead and pinch the top to create the triangle shape all the way along so that you basically have a very long triangular prism. Here it's a bit easier for you to see the pinches that I made. Like the other designs I then twisted the clay before adding it to my cupcake. has a similar concept in that we're basing it around a shape except this time it's going to be a square. So roll your clay into a long coil and then take a roller to flatten the top and the bottom slightly. Then take a blade and cut off the excess on either side so that we're left with that square shape and then just twist it and add it to your creation. we have this one that probably looks the most cartoonish out of all of the designs. So for this one I'm going to be using a small cookie cutter. These ones here are made by the clay brand Primo and they have a range of shapes available in craft stores or you can get ones like this pack that I have here online from sites such as eBay. Firstly take your clay and flatten it down with a roller to your ideal thickness. Then just push your cookie cutter into the clay and give it a little wriggle around to help it break away from the rest of the clay and then you should be left with your shape. If the edges do look a little messy, you can blend back down the excess clay using your fingers or one of your tools. And of course, if you don't have a cookie cutter or just don't want to use one, you can also try and freehand it using a blade. And then all you have to do is just attach this to your creation. This next design includes using a clay extruder that can be found at craft stores in the clay section or online. They are usually metal ones like this and they have a range of ends that come with them. When making frosting I usually go for these flowery shaped ones because I don't have a star shaped one but if I did I would probably go for that instead. So I screwed the tip that I wanted to use into the extruder and then took my clay and stuck it on the end of the push a bit. 
Then I just push the clay through until it wouldn't go anymore and then I cut it away using my blade. I also twisted this design like the others but I also pulled it and stretched it out as well because it was too thick for my cupcake charm so I wanted to make it thinner. This is also why it's really important to condition your clay well if you do decide to stretch it out so that it won't crack in different spots. Then you can just add it to your creation as you would the other ones. And also just for your reference, I clean out my clay extruder using my needle tool and I scrape the clay out and away from the sides using this. The next method is probably one of my favourites and this is done using a regular piping tip. There are so many different ones available in different shapes and sizes, but the particular one I use is a Wilton number 16, meaning that it's a small star shaped tip. You can purchase these from kitchen slash homeware stores in the baking type section, or you can also get them online. I firstly roll my clay into a slight cone shape so that it glides through the piping tip more easily. Then this is optional and I don't do it every time, but to make it easier you can cover the clay in some corn flour and this will prevent it from sticking to the sides of the piping tip. I then just pop it in and push it through using one of my tools and again it's important that your clay is well conditioned so that it doesn't crack as it comes out. Then just trim some of it off once you've pushed enough clay through and I also like to twist it before adding it to my charm. Also, like the extruder design, you can also gently pull at it if you need it to be thinner at all. This design here involves using liquid polymer clay, which is polymer clay just in a spreadable liquid form. And like regular polymer clay, it still needs to be baked the same to harden. There are a few different types to choose from, but in this particular tutorial I'm using Sculpey Bacon Bond. Because these liquid clays are translucent, you'll need some powdered pigments to add any colour if you're wanting to. I'm using chalk pastels, which can be found at craft stores or online, or you can even use something such as old makeup if you really want to. A scrap piece of paper and put the amount of liquid clay I'm wanting to use before scraping in some chalk pastel powder which is a bit hard to see here because I am using white to keep with a the theme. Then just mix it in all really well before adding it to your creation. have any left over there's no need to waste it because these mixtures can be stored and kept fresh in paint containers ready to use on another charm later on. Next up we have this frosting which is pretty much just a thicker version of the last one and can be made by mixing clay into the liquid clay. So firstly condition the piece of clay really well and then smoosh it into the liquid clay using one of your tools. I'm using this flat sort of one. I decided to use white clay but if you're wanting to end up with a coloured icing you can either mix in a coloured piece of clay or mix in white clay and then scrape in some powdered pigments the colour of your choice. If your mixture is too thick you can add in some more liquid clay and if you find that it's too runny just mix in some more polymer clay. When I'm happy with the consistency, I simply add it to my charm and like the last frosting design, if you have any left over, you can store it for later on in a paint container. Next up is kind of like a DIY liquid clay using regular polymer clay and water. So for this, I took a cup of warm water from the tap and dipped in my fingers, then started conditioning the clay. You also want to add the water gradually and not all at once. So the main idea of this is that the warm water will warm up your fingers and therefore warm up the clay and making it so sticky and mushy that it kind of starts to resemble liquid clay. Kind of like when you accidentally over condition clay but um, this just helps speed up the process. When it begins to get a little too sticky to handle I like to put it on a piece of scrap paper and continue mixing it with one of my tools. 
If you do need to, you can add a little bit more water and continue mixing it around with the clay. You can then add it onto your charm once you're happy with it and it won't be super runny like the real liquid clay versions but it will be soft and spreadable and end up looking very similar. This next design is probably not the best example because I'm not the greatest at realistic pieces but I'm basically trying to show you that you can also freehand the frosting and try and sculpt it yourself. So for this one I'm using a range of different size dotting tools to texture the clay which I firstly shaped into a rough dollop kind of shape. I then just went around with my tools and added texture to make it look like a dollop of cream as much as I possibly could and then I positioned it on top of my cupcake and blended down the edges. And for this final frosting design, I am kind of cheating a little bit because it's not done with clay, but it is a very popular method used within the crafting community. So for this one, I'm going to be using a silicon based deco whip. These can be found in Japanese stores such as Daiso or online. The particular one I'm using is actually a regular white silicone meant for hardware use and you can just get this from your local hardware store. If you are wanting to use one of these deco whips on your clay charms, you will need to pre-bake the clay because the frosting can't be put into the oven. So to do this design, I squeezed a little bit of the silicone onto some paper and then applied it to my cupcake using a toothpick. It would also work really well if you attached on a piping tip to the end and did it that way too. The only other thing with this method is that most silicons do stay flexible and slightly soft so it will have a very slight squishy texture unlike the clay frostings once it's dry. And there you have it, that is 12 different methods and techniques that you can use to make polymer clay icing slash frosting for your creations. All of these designs, except for the last silicon one, need to be baked in the oven as normal to cure and harden them. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more helpful tutorials, and I'll see you next time. Bye guys!